Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Kaczynski, a general dentist practicing outside of the Detroit area in Bingham Farms, Michigan. Today's topic will be atraumatic extractions, where we can predictably remove teeth where our patients have a positive response to our actions. But many of our patients are very apprehensive about such treatment. And many dentists, many general dentists, just don't like to remove teeth. And why would that be? Well, our patients are afraid because of bad experiences they've had in the past. And dentists don't necessarily like to take difficult teeth out because, just as I said, they're difficult. So we're gonna do step-by-step -step demonstrations and hopefully you'll be able to refresh your memory by reviewing this DVD frequently when you're doing a procedure and try to give you techniques that are incredibly predictable. So here our patient presents with obviously grossly decayed teeth, um, a quality of life that's been diminished. So we have a plan to re strategically remove most of the teeth. I'm going to actually maintain two of the maxillary teeth to hold a removable appliance. But our intent is, is to atraumatically remove the grossly decayed teeth and strategically place four dental implants and seat a maxillary transitional removable appliance that uh, has the palate removed. So the transition, it will be easier for the patient to accept. If we remove all the teeth, then the patient would need to be in an immediate uh, denture, which sometimes can be uh, psychologically and physically difficult for them. So I find giving them a palateless appliance uh, is a nice transition. We'll remove the last two remaining teeth um, after healing. So here we're going to demonstrate the removal of, strategic removal of some of the badly decayed teeth using the physics forceps. And you can see we have some grossly decayed teeth, some teeth that are, have a real problem. Now the physics forcep has two components. It has the working end, or the beak, which will engage the palatal surface of the root structure and will create tension onto that root structure, breaking down the periodontal um, ligaments through enzymatic action. It's a physiologic response. The, once the periodontal ligament is, is removed, the tooth will come up and out of the socket very traumatically. The second part of the instrument is what's referred to as a bumper, and that acts as a fulcrum. We place it as high up the vestibule as possible. There's a little silicone cover for it, uh, but it doesn't really do anything um, uh, as far as the extraction process. Again, it's just a fulcrum. So we're engaging the beak onto the palatal surface of a root, creating some type of purchase point, and we will simply hold the handles very lightly. We are not squeezing the handles, so it's rather unique. Um, it's different than a conventional forcep. I'm then going to rotate my wrist towards, in this tooth situation, towards the corner of the right eye, creating tension on the palatal aspect of the root. The root will then pop and move up and out of the socket. The instrument is not intended to remove the tooth in total, rather to disengage it um, one to three millimeters. We'll then take a tooth delivery instrument once the tooth is disengaged, and we will remove the root very atraumatically, maintaining that facial plate of bone. As we move along the arch, again, we're using the forcep to disengage the tooth up and out of the socket, and you can actually see in this photo here that the tooth is not coming out straight facial or buccal, rather it's coming up and out of the socket, maintaining that facial plate of bone very, very nicely, which will allow me to immediately place implants, which we'll demonstrate um, in a little bit. We take our tooth delivery instrument and we remove this two-rooted bicuspid with um, um, curved roots very, very easily, atraumatically for the patient and atraumatically for the doctor. We'll simply go across the arch and remove the remaining teeth. I'm going to maintain two teeth on the upper jaw, uh, but again, we're not squeezing the instrument. I'm simply holding the handles, creating tension onto the palatal surface, taking our tooth delivery instrument and simply removing a tooth from the socket. The bumper, again, is just a fulcrum. The tooth will disengage from the tension of the beak 
up and out of the socket, take our tooth delivery instrument, and simply remove the tooth from the socket, maintaining that facial plate of bone very, very nicely. Uh, bone is gold to us, especially in immediate extraction, immediate placement of implants. Going across to the other side of the arch, removing very grossly decayed teeth, very simply, very atraumatically for the patient and for the doctor. Taking out the other teeth with the same technique, you can see that we clearly remove the tooth up and out of the socket very simply. Now I'm going to use the Implant Direct Legacy 3 system. We're going to create our osteotomies to place four maxillary dental implants. We're using direct gen allograft material from in Implant Direct, wetting it with uh, sterile water or saline, filling the socket and using our Legacy 3 dental implant, um, ratcheting into place, torquing it here to 25 newton centimeters, which is very, very adequate stability. We're in ideal position, placing our second implant uh, in the socket site, uh, creating our osteotomy uh, openings using subsequent wider diameter burrs to the correct depth, placing our Legacy 3 dental implant and torquing it into position. Now, on the other side of the arch, we have a little bit of a problem in that we have a significant defect. So I'm going to flap the area by making an incision into the attached gingiva only. I don't want to make the incision into the mucosa. When we go into the mucosa, we create a lot of prostaglandin release and the patient will experience a lot more discomfort. So I'm simply making a vertical incision so that I can see the defect of bone, not created by the extraction, rather created by the gross decay um, of the teeth. We're going to, to make our vertical incision and flap the site, and you can see the significant defect uh, in that area. We're going to use our direct gen allograft material, our resorbable cytoplast membrane, and we're going to passively place the membrane so that it engages at least two millimeters of good facial bone and two millimeters of palatal bone. The membrane is very passively placed. It's not going to go anywhere. I'll use my suture technique where I go from the crustal aspect to the facial and then from the crustal aspect to the palatal and I'm able to get um, nice closure um, of our, of our uh, flap so that we are able to fix the defect nicely, place our fourth dental implant in correct position as we demonstrated earlier using the Legacy 3 system from Implant Direct. The implants are ideally positioned uh, in front of the sinus area. Again, I'm maintaining the two remaining teeth so that uh, the flipper has um, something to rest on and we're able to give that patient some stability with a um, palateless uh, uh, transitional appliance. For more information and to watch several more clinical videos, please visit physicsforceps.com or call 1-877-987-2284.